over me And you have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me And you have been so, so kind to me And you won't climb up coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down coming after me church welcome welcome love seeing everyone here in person and thank you all for joining us online for our sunday morning worship service so i'll go ahead and rise together to our feet as you're able and would you join me in a word of prayer gracious god we give you thanks and we give you praise for who you are all that you've done for us and all that you continue to do lord and Father, as we have come together to worship you in this place and also online, Lord, we ask that, that your name will be celebrated together as, as we have gathered for, for you and for you alone. Lord, we want to just lift you up this morning, for you are worthy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's worship together this morning. Breakthroughs on our side. 
Let's give him praise this morning. Let's go ahead and get seated. And as we do so, let's go ahead and greet one another in the name of our Lord. Good morning and welcome to church at Duluth First United Methodist Church. I'm Olivia Ellis. And whether you are here with us in person or joining us online we are very glad to have you we are very glad to have you here um, would you join me in a moment of prayer gracious God hear us this morning as oh so we ask you to fill this place and every heart with your spirit would each person feel your presence and your love hear all of our concerns this morning those that we have lifted up and those we have that we keep to ourselves and would your healing touch ran, rest on each and every one of us that needs to feel your touch. And we thank you for all the blessings and praises that make possible for each and every one of us. God, hear us this morning as we praise and worship you. And may all that we say and all that we do and all that we sing bring glory to you. And God, would you bless the reading and hearing of our word this morning. May each and every one of us hear what it is that each one of us needs to hear. Amen. Our text this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 14 through 27. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And they asked him, What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought you... I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O oh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw him, immediately convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood, and it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, help my, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw the that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You are mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning. Hey, it's working a little better than last week. 
Nice. I want to welcome everybody. Let me add my welcome. Um, it's so good to see everybody here in person with us this morning. And, and for all of you that are uh, watching this online, we're so glad you've joined us. And um, if you would, if you're watching online, leave a comment underneath. Let us know you're here. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and all of you that are here, I, the, the, all these beautiful, shining faces this morning on this beautiful, shiny, sunshiny day after yesterday's day of rain. So glad you got up and came in this morning. Um, it's good, so good to see everybody. It does my heart so good um, to see folks starting to come back to church into corporate worship where we belong together as community. So we're glad you're here with us this morning. If you would, as we prepare to hear a word uh, from God this morning, would you join me in a minute of prayer as we prepare our hearts and our minds for God's word this morning? Gracious and loving God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together as your children, brothers and sisters in Christ, together in community, in corporate worship, as we sing our praises to you and cry out to hear a word from you together. So would your spirit overflow this place and would your word touch each person here and may each of us hear what it is you have to say to each one of us individually. Lord, we ask all this in the name of your precious and your holy son, Jesus. Amen. I want to give a, a couple of thank yous this morning before I get started. Olivia Ellis, thank you for coming in and doing litter just for us this morning. Great job, as always. Um, and then um, we've got a special guest volunteering to help us out this morning upstairs. The audio genius that is Mark Wetlaufer is here uh, filling in uh, to make sure we got great sound this morning. So, Mark, thank you for being with us this morning. Um, and he does a great job up there to make these folks, um, they sound awesome, and he makes them sound e even more awesome. So, uh, Mark, thank you. And then every week, and I always forget, I always just kind of forget, but every week there's a guy here um, that stands in the back and makes sure the camera is on and recording and doing what it's supposed to be doing, and, and Clark Brain. Man, I, don't, I can't thank you enough, brother. Thank you for being here every week. Um, so we're in, we're in this series that we're calling Help My Unbelief, and we're in week three. And I've got to say, folks, in all my years of being in ministry and preaching, I have received more texts and more emails and had more people catch me in the halls of the church to thank me for this series and the last two weeks, it's been incredible to me, the feedback. So I, I'm praying that this series and this help my unbelief and this doubts and this questions, it's touching people. And, and I hope it gives us permission to admit, hey, everything's not always all right with me. There are times when I struggle and have doubts and questions in my faith. And so I hope in the, this week and next week as we close this out that it continues to touch everyone um, and, and helps you in, in your journey. So, um, and, and we've been talking about these times and we'll continue about when we're faced with doubts and questions that have to do with our faith. And the thing is, folks, Scripture is filled with this. I, I picked four Scriptures, but it's throughout the Bible of people questioning and having doubts. So my prayer is that, that throughout this series that you're encouraged and you realize that honest doubts and honest questions are not a bad thing. We don't need to feel guilty and ashamed because we have these feelings at times. The, the, the pillars of our faith had the same feelings that we deal with so many years later. And what I hope we see is, is that there is faith in honest doubt. Now, not all doubts are honest. Some doubts are an excuse to live however we so desire. But faith is what helps us to trust God while we're working through our doubts. We don't pretend that all is well, yet we're confident that God has not forsaken us. We start with where we're at in our journey and we go from there. And when it seems that we've made so little progress in our faith that, that God has not forsaken us. And when it seems that we're not making any progress, God leads us forward through it all. 
Reflective Christianity involves questioning what you believe while continuing, continuing to believe what you are questioning. Let me say that again. Reflective Christianity involves questioning what you believe while you continue to believe what you are questioning. And we've seen that the last two weeks with John the Baptist and with Peter the disciple, and today we see one of the most remarkable and honest admissions in all of Scripture. It's a very frank assessment of what this man wanted but knew he had not achieved yet. He was only certain that his faith was inadequate and was beset by fear and doubt. It's like he's saying, I would like great faith, but I'm not there. I'm overcome by the circumstances around me when I know I should be above it all. And here's the thing I hope we see. We are all that man. That man is all of us. We've all been there at some point, overwhelmed by circumstances that we don't know what to do or what to think. We want to believe, we want to trust, but every time we allow ourselves to get our hopes up, they are shattered and nothing seems to change. And that's where this father in our passage today is. And for me at least, there are two intriguing things that happen in this passage. But first we need to understand some context of where we're at. It's important that we understand that this account in Scripture in all of the Gospels happens immediately after the transfiguration of Christ. Jesus has taken along Peter and James and John up with him on the mountain for a preview of all the heavenly reality that is waiting for those who have been redeemed in Christ. And it's awesome. It's such an awesome experience that Peter doesn't want it to end. So Peter graciously offers to build tents for everybody so they can all stay there on the mountain together and they would never have to leave. Guess what? Things weren't so awesome for the nine guys who didn't go up the mountain with Jesus. They weren't having having any otherworldly, heavenly experience. They were experiencing some harsh realities. The reality of living in a broken world full of strife and disappointment, right? We can all understand that. When Jesus, Peter, James, and John come walking back down from the mountain, here's the scene they walk into. Verse 14. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them, the scribes arguing with them. This heated argument is raging because this man had brought his son to be healed of a demon possession, but the disciples were unable to help. So the scribes, the religious leaders of the day, rush in to take advantage of the situation. They wanted to make the disciples look silly and trivial in front of this big crowd that has gathered. Can you imagine grown men, holy men, shouting and hurling theological arguments back and forth. And all the while, one man in the crowd can hardly bring himself to watch. This this man's heart has been broken again and again. He was very familiar with this feeling he was experiencing right now, but that never seemed to make it less raw and dark. No matter how many times he had felt this way over the many years, If he were just fighting for himself, he would have given up a long time ago. But this wasn't about him. This was about fighting for his son, trying to help his boy. He would allow himself to get his hopes up again, knowing they would more than likely be crushed again because his son needed him to, so that he would always try one more time. But so far, nothing had worked. He had no reason to have faith that anything could work. His son's problem weren't normal. He had demonic, epileptic fits. It's not like that people didn't want to help. People wanted to help. They just didn't know how. Listen and try and imagine how devastating this must have been for this father. Verse 17, and someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son for you 
for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I ask your disciples to cast it out and they were not able. And Jesus answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, Jesus, immediately it convulsed the boy and he fell on the ground and rolled about foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And the father said, from childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. Listen, it makes complete sense that this man has a bruised and battered faith. And his faith now has a fresh new wound when Jesus comes because he had gone with great hope to the disciples who, like the others, failed to make any kind of difference at all. The evil spirit still gripped the boy as tightly as ever. It takes a whole lot of courage for this man to speak up and to even ask Jesus for help. And today, it still takes great courage for us to ask Jesus for help. So many times we want to and we're afraid. It takes great courage to ask Jesus. And in this man's pain, you can see why his request to Jesus begins so guardedly. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. If you can, the man says, if you can. And then Jesus' reply, he goes straight to the heart of the matter. And Jesus said to him, if you can... All things are possible for one who believes. The question isn't about what I can do. The question is, do you believe? He's not being mean to the man. He's not challenging the man. Jesus says this because he knows that it will bring something beautiful out of this man. A powerful confession of sin and a wonderful confession of faith. Both, both being what this man needs so desperately. And desperation is the right word. The years of emotion well up from deep inside this man. All of the hopes that have fallen down so hard. All of the sleepless nights from worry. All of the helplessness and tears are first forced to the surface and come crashing out of his mouth. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. It was all that he had left to say. All that was left of his bruised and battered faith. All he had left laid bare, unadored, unrestrained in just a handful of words. I believe, help my unbelief. But what we need to see is where this man was weak and where we are weak. This man found that Jesus was strong. Please see and notice the response of Jesus. Jesus heard his cry and responded to his his weakness of faith. He responded to the man's weakness of faith in strength and in love. In the end, we see what really matters. Christ is strong, not us. What matters is that God can do not us. What matters is sometimes only seen when we come to realize that we cannot help ourselves, that we are not as in control as we thought or as good as we thought or as strong as we thought or as able as we had imagined. So I'm asking you today, where are you today? To what corners of your life does your mind go to When you hear those words, I believe, help my unbelief. I'm asking you because I know something about you and about me that is true. You've had doubts. We've all had doubts in our journey. You've had hopes built up and then crushed. You've wondered at times if God is even hearing you when you call out to him. How do I know? Because I've been there too. 
How do I know? Because you're real people living life in the real world and you've experienced real pain and real fear and real heartache. And this man's words strike us so deeply because they are our words so often. They are honest words. They are real words. The words we'd like to shout ourselves but are afraid to because we're afraid of what others might think of us. The questions swirl in our minds. Is it really okay to admit that I have doubts? Is it really okay to say I need help with my faith? Is it really okay to be completely transparent about my struggles? And the answer to all of these is yes. Yes. Hear me, church. This is life. And this is what the journey of faith looks like sometimes. Look at the Bible and you'll see how true it is. The people of Israel had a very crooked footprint path of faith. They pleased God and then they turned from him. And then they were led back to God by the Holy Spirit and were restored. And then they did it all over again and over again and over again throughout Scripture. Listen, King David, the very same King David who wrote in the first verse of Psalm 118, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. That King David is the very King David who wrote in Psalm 10, why, O Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? He really struggled with faith sometimes. King David, he had questions. He was honest and real, but he kept struggling and he kept asking and he kept seeking God. Even the disciples had a hard time with their faith. They had been bold witnesses for Christ. They had seen him perform many miracles. They had walked with him for almost three years at this point, and yet their understanding and their faith languished and they could not drive the demons out of this boy. This is what the real journey of faith looks like sometimes. I'm sorry to tell that, but it's true. Actually, I'm not sorry at all because something important happens sometimes in these dark moments that we go through. In these dark places, in the shadowy corners of our hearts, we come to an important realization that faith cannot be all about us. We have to fix our eyes on something greater or someone greater. We have to look up. And as it says in Psalm 121, I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Help, faith, salvations, these, these things are not rooted inside of us. They are gifts given to us from our God. They are gifts rooted in our rescuer, our savior. They are gifts found in the blood-soaked sacrifice on that cross for our sins. They are found in the empty grave clothes that once wrapped the body of the killed Christ now risen. If you feel that all you have to offer God is a bruised and battered and beaten faith, it still doesn't affect at all what he has to offer you. It doesn't matter if you feel that you are on the very edge of your faith. It doesn't matter if you struggle with deep doubts. It doesn't matter if you don't know how long you can hang on to your faith in the storm you are going through. Because Christ, Christ will never let go of you. Christ never has doubts about you. He never has questions about what you are worth to him. He knew what it would cost to make you his. He knew the price he would have to pay. He knew how far you would wander from him. He knew how much you would sin, and he knew how much it would hurt. But he also knew that he didn't want to live without you. So he made your salvation real, as real as two wooden beams that made a cruel cross, as real as a cold stone tomb a place of darkness and death that he would turn into a symbol of light and life for you. He hears you, he knows you, and he loves you. 
even in those moments when all you can say is what that father said so many years ago, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And if you would, leave that slide up. Understand that even this is amazing. Even this is a gift, gift from God. Even this is a confession of faith. It takes courage to be that honest, to say out loud that things are not perfect, that my faith isn't perfect, that I need Jesus to intervene in my life even right now. Can you say those words? Can you let your guard down? Can you trust the Christ, the cross is enough for you? Can you look past yourself to find comfort in the empty tomb? Can you trust what Christ has done for you? So I'm inviting you this morning, would you say those words with me together? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And Christ's response is always the same. I know. And I love you. You belong to me. That response is always the same. I know, and I love you, and you belong to me. Gracious and loving God, this morning, thank you for your word. And may we be encouraged, no matter where we are in our faith journey, no matter what storm we are passing through, no matter how bruised and battered and brittle our faith may be, that your response is always the same for us. And may we have the courage to cry out, to have you intervene in our lives even now. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your son who died that death on that cross for us, who lay in that cold stone tomb and was resurrected to life for us. Lord, may we take comfort in that and have faith in that and trust in that. In the name of your precious and your holy son, Jesus, amen. Before we go further, today is a big day in the church. It's Baby Recognition Sunday where we um, recognize all the babies that have been born in the last year. And this morning, um, we want to recognize four babies um, Campbell Elizabeth French, whose parents are Sarah and Brian French. Daniel James Fuino, whose parents are Robert and Cherie Fuino. Daisy Ann Peterson, whose parents are Eric and Megan Peterson. And Kai Thomas Henry Staley, parents are Jamie and Dana Staley. We want to congratulate those families in the birth of those babies over the last year. And may God hold them and give them a place to rest and may they feel God's presence with them always. So now, Olivia, if you would come up. If you've been visiting with us online or in person and you would like to make this your church home, we invite you to come forward during this closing song or contact Reverend Beth Shugart for more information. Her information is on the bottom of the screen and in the information section of this video. Now, as we enter our time of offering, we, we want to invite you to click on the online giving link in the information section of this video or go to DuluthUMC.org and click on the online giving tab there to set up a recurrent, recurrent giving. Now, would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, as we bring forth our gifts and humbly offer them to you, we ask that you would bless the heart of each giver and that you would bless each gift beyond anything we could imagine for the expansion of your kingdom here on earth and here in the now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's all rise together and sing this closing song together.
God's people said, amen. Y'all have a seat. And I'm going to zip through some announcements um, before we say the benediction and have our sending forth. First of all, uh, we want to remember the family of Tom or some, uh, Tommy Somerville. Uh, Ginger, Tommy passed away this morning. Um, arrangements will be pending and we'll let you know. But we want our prayers and our thoughts to, to remain with the Somerville family um, in Tommy's passing this morning. Um, a couple of things that we want you to be aware of. You can go to the website and check all this out and even more, DuluthUMC.org. Well, we need, if you know somebody or you have a child or grandchild 
uh, that is graduating high school, trade school, tech school, college, we need their picture, okay? Um, gra senior graduation Sunday recognition is coming up May 16th. We need their pictures for the insert and slides and all that kind of stuff. So let them know to get those to me and Ken Willie so we can use that. Um, also, Vacation Bible School registration is open online. You can go there uh, to our website and find it there, that information, and sign up for Vacation Bible School. And then uh, a new session of grief support, uh, grief share support is beginning May 5th. If you or someone you know needs some support, something has happened, you are struggling with something, um, and you would like to join this session in this group of grief share, um, call the church office. Uh, you can get a hold of Brenda Bridges um, or Sue French, and their contact information is in the Sunday supplement. So find that and get signed up for that. So now, if you would, sorry to let you sit down so short, but now if you would stand as you are able for our benediction and our sending forth. May we go forth from this place as children of God. And may we go knowing the circumstances and storms of life are going to come. And we may struggle and we may be battered and we may be beaten. And we may cry, I believe, but help my unbelief. But may we rest and trust that Christ's response is always the same. I know. And I love you. And you are mine, always, you are mine. And may we share that with this world who so desperately needs the love of Christ. May we share that with everyone. In the name of the, in the, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Y'all have a great week, love you, see you next week.